What a quantum computer does is it has three properties. It has a concept of superposition, it has the concept of interference, and a concept of entanglement. So with superposition, what it'll do is kind of open every book at the same time. And then with entangled superposition, it'll kind of figure out, roughly speaking, where that book that she wrote the number is, and then put all the books back on the shelf, but the one that has the number kind of pull it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. So then as a classical computer, you come and you notice that one of the books is a little pulled out, so you know that's the book you go and grab. So it doesn't speed up how fast you do the calculation, rather it gives you some intuition of where to look. And the reason why this defeats cryptography is that most of cryptography is that needle in a haystack thing. Right. When you have the public key, it's all the books. Yeah. But when you have the private key, you know that it's that particular book, right? Yeah. So whether it be integer factorization or discrete logarithm problem or these Mm -hmm. types of things. So when a quantum computer comes, it will defeat classical crypto because it'll give you that through Grover's algorithm and Shor's algorithm, a a sense of, of basically where to look for these things. Now, we have a class of algorithms called post-quantum crypto algorithms that give us the ability to defeat that. Post-quantum crypto algorithms. And the biggest issue with post-quantum crypto was not the math, it was the standardization. 